All right, so we found that staggered arrangement of the mesh is good because it eliminates checkerboard pressure oscillations, although you still haven't written a code and tried out all that, but you will find that it works fine, okay, on a staggered mesh with the kind of interpolation that you're doing. <clears throat> and that's a huge advantage, and mainly because we, by staggering the mesh, we have essentially eliminated interpolation because when for the continuity equation we require phase velocities and those phase velocity nodes essentially or the momentum equation nodes or cell centers are sitting right on top of the uh, continuity control volume phases so it completely eliminates any need for interpolation that's basically what we've gained by staggering the mesh but of course it has many many disadvantages okay and that's why staggered mesh is no longer used today although it was um, used in the early days of CFD. Number one, bookkeeping is difficult and tedious. You've already, for those of you who have started writing code, you already have seen that. Uh, boundary conditions are difficult to implement. You have to do it separately for each independent variable. There is no sort of unified treatment because the, once you stagger the mesh, you don't have U and V velocities at the same location. So, the way you apply boundary conditions for X momentum is different from the way you apply boundary conditions for Y momentum. For each case, you have to draw a picture of its own and then figure out, okay, which control volume am I looking at? What are the cells, cell centers near the boundaries or away from the boundaries and so forth, okay? So all that you have to take into account. Interpolation is counterintuitive. We've already talked about this, that for certain values, you just use the cell center value, and for certain other values, you use a four-point interpolation, okay, which is quite counterintuitive, and it changes from variable to variable. For U, you are doing it a certain way. For V, you are doing it a certain way. For P, you are doing it a certain way. For gamma, you are doing it a certain way, okay? So you can't write, let's say, one function or procedure and say, I just feed in my cell center values and out comes the phase values, okay? You can't do that because for every variable, it's different. And I also pointed it out because of this same problem, the link coefficients of the X and Y momentum equations are different. So you have to write separate programs for those two, okay? Uh, another slightly more further down the road is we're saying that advanced solvers are difficult to use like multi-grid solvers because you know multi-grid you don't want different different grids for different variables and have to you know worry about okay how the information is transferred and so forth it becomes a nightmare essentially okay when we use a solver like a multi-grid solver we want it want to develop it like a black box package where you know we just feed in the mesh mesh being only one mesh, okay, and out comes the solution. So, but we can't do that because we have staggered the mesh now, or, or at least it's very difficult to do. And it become, makes it almost impossible to use it for unstructured mesh topology because, you know, staggering, what does staggering even mean for an unstructured mesh uh, topology, okay? Becomes really, really difficult. Now, of course, a collocated mesh naturally addresses all of these problems, and um, you know, you've saw you've used a so-called collocated mesh for a single PDE, okay? But now we are going to use it for all the variables. Most importantly, we can do a universal treatment to all of the variables. We don't have to worry about x momentum and y momentum separately and all that, okay? And also, a very modular and easy to use for complex geometry including unstructured mesh, which we will talk about down the road. Okay. So the problem, of course, is that we still have to ad address the challenge of checkerboard pressure oscillations. So we already, when we started using staggered mesh, we said that the reason we use it, it is because col on collocated mesh, we have checkerboard pressure oscillations, and that's the reason people went away from it. So now we are back to square one, where we're saying, okay, we still want to use it, but then how do we address this issue, okay? So of course, to address it, you first have to understand where is, where is it coming from, okay? And like I said many times before, this comes from the fact that we have to interpolate from cell to phase velocities for the continuity equation, okay? 
Um, continuity equation, remember your right-hand side of your pressure correction equation, which is derived from the continuity equation, is your mass imbalance. To calculate your mass imbalance, you need velocities at all four faces. Now, velocities at four faces are not readily available because on a co-located mesh, you have cell centers which are not on the faces, so you have to interpolate somehow, okay? And that essentially causes the problem. Now, to understand this, let's consider a 1D flow, very simple scenario with constant density and a prescribed inlet velocity equal to 1, okay? So our continuity equation for a 1D flow simply becomes that. Okay, and I'm using constant density here, so rho is the same on both faces. But we have rho times ue minus rho times u west times delta y equal to zero. Okay. Uh, for 1D, our staggered mesh is going to look like that. So as you know, we have the green control volumes, which is our scalar control volume on which we solve for pressure also. Okay, and then we have the... Um, the momentum control volumes, which basically look like that in this case, around those red cell centers, those two are staggered, okay? Since we are looking at a 1D problem, we are looking at only staggering in the X direction, all right? So if I um, apply this continuity equation to this kind of a staggered arrangement, you see clearly if I now look at this control volume right here in the middle, okay, my U east for this control volume right there is that one, which is nothing but U capital east because there is a velocity node or cell center right there, okay? So it translates to the U small east becomes U capital east because there's a velocity node right there. And then the U uh, west becomes U naught. I want to emphasize here that there is no upwinding or anything going on here. This is exact because we have staggered the mesh. Okay, we are not saying that U small east is U equal to U capital east because of upwinding or downwinding. No such thing. Okay, this is the exact representation that comes from the fact that we have staggered the mesh. Because for this control volume, the eastern face of that control volume is nothing but where we are actually storing the velocity corresponding to capital E. All right? So we have this equation, and of course, density is constant, so our solution to that equation is U east is equal to U naught. Okay? So you can clearly see what's going to happen. If I start from this velocity, I'm saying, so if I start from that equal to one, then I'm saying the eastern one, eastern uh, velocity is going to be equal to that. So this velocity will become equal to that. And then I move, keep moving, this one will become equal to that and so on. Okay, so if I start with a boundary condition of one, my final solution will be U equal to one everywhere, okay? which is the correct solution, because to conserve mass for a 1D problem, U must be the same value since density is a constant, okay? So clearly, by staggering the mesh, I have attained that, obtained the correct solution. Now let's see what happens when we don't stagger the mesh and we use a collocated mesh instead, okay? So same equation we are starting with, continuity equation with the phase velocities, okay? But now we have a co-located mesh where the, the red um, cell centers and the green cell centers are co-located. It's the same control volume we are looking at, okay? Momentum and continuity are solved on the same mesh. So again, this is our target control volume we are looking at, let's say, okay? But now we don't have these phase velocities. See, earlier this red square that I've drawn here was actually here, right? So therefore, we didn't have to worry about phase velocities. But now we do have to worry about phase velocities because we are calculating velocities by solving the momentum equation on those red squares, okay? So to get the phase velocity, we have to do some sort of an interpolation. Now let's see, say we do distance-weighted interpolation, which so far I've been saying don't do or it doesn't work. But if we do, what happens? Okay, why do we not want to use it? So that's the question I'm trying to answer here. So suppose we use that. 
okay this is distance weighted interpolation obviously equally spaced mesh so the um, weighting functions are half okay and now i plug it into my continuity equation density again is a constant so instead of u east i've used this instead of u west i've used that plug it in um, simplify you see the u naughts cancel out and i get u east is equal to u west okay now, what's the problem with that? The problem with that is this constraint or solution to our continuity equation can be satisfied by infinite many velocity fields. Okay? I'll show you three examples here. This can be satisfied by this velocity field, 1, 0, 1, 0, alternating. Why? Because I'm simply saying u east is equal to u west. Okay? Similarly, I'm saying u east is equal to u west. All right? So this checkerboard velocity field actually satisfies this equation perfectly. Okay? I can say, well, this one also satisfies that velocity field. Okay? Now, these are just two examples. I'm using 1 and 0, but it could be 1 and 0.8. Okay? Okay? That's why I'm saying there are infinite many solutions to this. It doesn't have to be 1 and 0, all right? It could be 1 and 0.8 alternating in different ways. Or it could also be satisfied by the correct solution, which is 1 everywhere. So the correct solution is one of infinite many possible solutions to this equation. And that is why... When you try to use this sort of a formulation and solve your pressure correction equation, your solutions will flip-flop. So basically what will happen is when you're iterating your outer, in your outer loop iteration, if you look at the pressure field between two successive equations, you may find they're completely different. And not only that, you look at the solution at the first iteration and third iteration, you might find strong similarities. In other words, the second and the fourth may have strong similarities. The first and the third may have strong similarities. I'm just making up these numbers, but they can exhibit this sort of quasi-periodic quasi behavior. Okay? It will be like an oscillation that will go on and on forever. And sometimes you may have it flip-flop between three solutions. Bottom line is it's not going to converge. Okay? Because... When you do it numerically, what will happen is it cannot decide between which, which solution should I go to. Both are possible or infinite many are possible. All right? So that's the problem you're going to get. And this is what people refer to as in the literature as checkerboard pressure oscillations. All right? 